At the end of this video, we'll take a look at Mad Ramp's innovative pivoting ramp system, the safer, easier way to transport your ATVs and snowmobiles. Stick around. Before we begin, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our friends at the historic Lancaster Motel in Lancaster, New Hampshire. The Lancaster Motel has been serving snowmobilers since the 60s and they are the perfect eastern trail riding destination for snowmobilers young and old. The Lancaster Motel is right on Corridor Trail 5 in Lancaster, New Hampshire with plenty of parking for vehicles, sleds and trailers. Plus, the Lancaster Motel is within walking distance of Crane's Snowmobile Museum, plus restaurants, shopping, entertainment and more. Click the link in the description to learn more about the Lancaster Motel. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here tonight. I really appreciate it. And my phone is going nuts just as I'm starting the show. Murphy's Law never fails, does it? Uh, well, maybe it's done. Okay. Ah, that being said, uh, we have a full slate of vintage snowmobile programming in store for you tonight. But before we get to that, I'm going to ask you uh, to leave a comment in the comment section. If you can see my face and hear my voice, uh, just leave a quick hello. Let us know where you're viewing this from. Also, if you're a first time viewer, please mention that you're a first time viewer. If you're a regular viewer, please mention that you're a regular viewer. And I do have a message for all of you. If you're a first time viewer, I thank you so much for coming on here and give us, giving us a chance tonight to see what we have going on. I hope that you like what you see and that you decide to come back here every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time to join in the fun. And to our regular viewers, I thank you so much for coming back here every week. I'm seeing so many familiar faces in the comments. It really means a lot. And this is how we grow this uh, podcast. So I thank you so much for that. And for all of you viewing, if you're liking what you're seeing and if you'd like to try to help me uh, try to support this podcast, I ask you if you could possibly share this on your profile or share it on a friend's profile who might enjoy this uh, or share it in a private message. This is a great way to help spread the word about the podcast and it would really help me a lot. If you like what you're seeing and you'd like to try to support this, it's a great way to do it and I thank you in advance for that. So before we get to our entertainment here tonight, um, let's take a quick look at the comment section and see what's coming in. Jill Bolduc, is Ophel racing live and well? When was the last specific oval machine built? Any current oval machines uh, currently being built? That is an excellent question. I am not sure about factory sleds currently being built. I don't, I'm not really an expert on racing. To me, racing is exciting and entertaining, but I don't know a whole lot about it other than going there and having a good time. If anyone has uh, answers for Jill, 
uh, please leave them here in the comments and, and uh, Jill can monitor that and, and, uh, and see what, uh, what the answer is. Uh, let's see. We've got Paul Billadu, regular viewer. Appreciate your being on. Uh, yes, Paul, we need snow and lots of it here in New Hampshire. Absolutely. Same here in Vermont and Quebec and, and I think most of the Northeast. Uh, next, we have Pat Fuller on from Webster, New York. Pat says he can hear us and see us. That's wonderful. Uh, Greg Martin from Tug, <coughs> pardon me, from Tug Hill, New York. I've got a tickle in my throat tonight. Alan Gove, first time viewer from New Hampshire. Thank you for coming on, Al. We appreciate it. Hope that you like this and uh, decide to join us every week and join in the fun and this vintage fun. Uh, Kevin Blessy, regular viewer. How you doing, Kevin? Nice to have you on. Tracy Dudley Slipinski, Skipinski, uh, Fosteria, Michigan. Thanks for coming on, Tracy. We have Michael Peak, first time viewer from Saratoga, New York. Thank you so much, Michael, for coming on to check this out. We really appreciate it. We have Jason Miller. Jason says it looks good. And Jason is from Birch Run, Michigan. Thanks for coming on. Uh, Paul Billadu from Gonick, New Hampshire. Appreciate, appreciate you coming on. Scott Verdun or Verdon uh, from Hudson, Michigan. Thanks for coming on tonight. We have Mark Streif. I've seen Mark's name on here before. I think he's a regular viewer. Syracuse, New York. Uh, Robert McQueen. Uh, Robble Rub, first time at camp in West Stewartstown. Robbie Rupp. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. No, I'm getting it now. Robbie Rupp, first time at camp uh, in West Stewartstown. Excellent. I grew up just over the bridge from West Stewartstown, by the way. Used to do a lot of tri trail riding over there in Canaan. Uh, great to have you on, Robert. I appreciate it. Love to see some pictures of your Rupps at some point. If you're able to email them to me, I'd love to share them on the program. And I thank you for being on. We have John Schoem, uh, first-time viewer from Holton, Maine. Thank you for coming on, John. We really appreciate it. Ryan Glenn from Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Thanks for coming on, Ryan. Uh, Pat Fuller. Uh, Pat Fuller loved his 440 rep. I uh, bet you did. Uh, those were great machines back in the day. Those are some of the better machines. Uh, ben Tucker from Tunbridge, Vermont. Second-time viewer. I remember you being on here last week, Ben. Thank you so much for coming on to see us again. That really means a lot. Ken Parker, a second time viewer. Thanks for coming on for a second time, Ken. Really appreciate it. And Ken, by the way, is in Kansas City, Missouri. John Spranger Jr. Yes, we see you on here every week, John. We appreciate your coming on. John says that he loves the podcast every week. And thank you, John, for coming on every week. It really means a lot. I appreciate it. Diane Baker is a familiar view, a familiar name here. She's on here quite often. Uh, Diane is doing a snow dance in the Catskills. Glad to hear you're getting some snow. By the way, I think we're supposed to get a little slow, snow tonight. I don't know how much it's going to amount to, but I think we're getting some tonight and, and possibly tomorrow night as well. Uh, Stacy and Art Fosler from Platte Kill, New York. Repeat viewer. Appreciate you guys coming on. It really means a lot. Uh, Jeff Brame from Lee Mass. Uh, Tony Bennett, not the singer. Probably not, but either way, we're glad to have you here from Bethel, Maine, first time viewer. Thanks for coming on to check this out. Uh, Ken Haberman, first time viewer. Thanks for coming on, Ken. I think we were emailing earlier today. Appreciate your coming on today. Uh, this is great. Uh, Casey Roscoe, here to support his dad, her, uh, his dad Joe Roscoe, uh, who we're, we're trying to get Joe on. We're having a technical problem. Joe is trying to get on uh, frantically. And uh, hopefully we're going to have him on, but we'll discuss that in just a moment. I've got a couple of more uh, of these to do here. Uh, John Witte, first time viewer from Michigan. Thanks for coming on, John. Uh, Lyndon Dewey, snowing in North Illinois. That is great news, Lindy. Uh, Lyndon, I'm sorry. Uh, Rick Petruco, repeat viewer. Recognize your name on here, Cortland, New York. We appreciate your coming on tonight. And we've got Brad Slack, second time viewer. Thank you for coming on, Brad. We really appreciate it. Uh, so let's take a look here at what's in store tonight. We're going to have to switch things around. Oops, let me move the um, the comment. Uh, we're going to have to switch things around because we're waiting for Joe to come on. I'm hoping that he's uh, still trying to get on here, and I'm going to message him while I'm playing this, this first video. But let's take a look at this first video. This is Gary Dubose, 1974 Polaris TX. Let's take a quick look. Hi, I'm uh, Gary DeBow from West Rutland, Vermont, and uh, this is my 74 TX253 Air that I restored from the uh, bottom up. It's a good little uh, runner and a nice little trail stop. Beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. 
cool. That was a short one, but it was a good one. Uh, so that was Gary Dubose, 1974 Polaris TX. Now, that was a couple of years ago at the Washington Snow Flyers Vintage Rally that they have every year. They usually have that the first Saturday of January every year. And, of course, with COVID and everything, they were not able to have it this year, which is a real bummer because that show is a lot of fun. That's one of the better shows here in the East. Uh, speaking of shows being canceled, it pains me. To bring this news to you, I know I've been talking up Crane's Vintage Snowmobile Show and how that was scheduled to happen on uh, February the 6th. Just got word this week that it has been canceled, and that is a real bummer. We totally understand, of course, because with COVID and everything, this just uh, that's just the way things are going right now. But uh, it is a bummer because that also is an excellent show. I, I enjoy that show every year. So I wanted to let you guys know because I've been really pushing this show. Uh, and if, if some of you were planning to go, I, I want to save you that trip only to, you know, to get there and find out that it's been canceled. Um, but let's see where we are in the program here. We're still waiting for Joe Roscoe to come on. Uh, but while we're waiting for Joe, let's take a look at Jim Murphy's 1973 Arctic Cat Panther. Let's take a look. My name is Jim Murphy. This is my 73 440 Panther. It's, uh, I got 3,500 miles on it. I picked it up a few months ago and tinkered it up, and got it running. It's um, I bought it a couple months ago and I kind of tinkered on it and got it going. And, um, but I don't. I was told it's original. The lady had it and wrote it. It's almost got 3,600 miles on it. Wow, it's a nice shape. I don't know if it's all true or not. You know, my mom had one when I was a kid. She had one brand new. Nice. Yeah, my parents had a lot of new sleds when I was when I was young. Nice. Put a million miles on them, riding around the field in the back of the house. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, so it brings back a lot of memories. Nice. Tinkering on them, getting running. Something to do in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That's yeah. what it is for me, too, is the yeah. memories. In fact, yeah. these, the 73 to 75 Panthers and Cheetahs were my favorite sleds of all. Because we had, my neighbors had them and stuff, and we used to go riding with them. And whenever I see these, it's like seeing an old friend, you know? I got a couple more 72s. Oh, really? 340s at home I'm tinkering on. Nice. 78 Flares Apollo. Yeah. Didn't get those ready. So sure. Just don't seem to be enough time in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you based out of? Orange. Orange, okay, yeah. Yep, right down the road. Yeah, nice. Tucker Road. Good. Yeah, so that was at the Washington Snow Flyers Vintage Rally in uh, the state of Vermont a couple of years ago. And Jim Murphy is a regular at a lot of these shows. If you go to any of the Eastern shows, he's a familiar face there. He's got some really nice early 70s cats and a few late 60s cats as well. Great collector, great guy. Uh, he's always fun to hang out with and, and talk about sleds. He's so passionate about the cats, which I love all of the brands. Uh, but I have to say cats, especially early 70s to mid 70s cats are my favorites. I just... Uh, something special about them, and if you um, if you see the colors on my um, uh, let's see, <laughs> the colors on my uh, podcast, you know I'm a cat fan, especially the early '70s, uh, the purple and the black and the white. That's those were the days. But uh, let's see what else we've got here. We're waiting for Jim. He's having some trouble get uh, Joe. I'm sorry, we're waiting for Joe Roscoe, and he's having some trouble getting on, which is really unfortunate. I hope that we can get this resolved uh, in time for the uh for the end of the program so that we can have him on if not we'll just have him on another time it's, it's it's not the end of the world but i really would like to bring him on because he's got some really nice things he'd like to show us uh so let's continue with the program and see if uh see if he can come on while we're uh, watching some more videos let's look at bruce borovage being inducted into the eastern snowmobile racing hall of fame uh, a few years ago back in 2018. Won no less 
less than a first, second, or third place finish in all races entered during the entire 1974 USSA season in A and B stock. Was USSA Eastern Point leader in both A and B stock for 1973 and 1974. Grace Methanol Field 1971 Articat 440 to many victories, including three classes at the Manchester Winter Carnival. Won A stock at the USSA World Series in Malone, New York in 1973 and took a fourth place in B stock. He has taken home over 120 trophies in nine years of racing. Won the Pennsylvania Governor's Cup and the Paul Bunyan's Cup and Bruce also won the 1975 Kilkenny Cup in Mod 4. So there we have it, Bruce Borovage inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame a couple of years ago, uh, 2018. I've met him a few times at some of these events. Really nice guy, really good guy. And of course, as you saw there, a, a truly accomplished racer and, and worthy of being there in the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. Now, I'm going to talk for a moment about the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. This is something that just gets bigger and bigger every year. And I hope that you decide to join us uh, this coming fall. Uh, let me find the graphic here, and I will uh, give you the details about the next ceremony. Uh, that's going to be Saturday, September the 11th, 2021, this coming fall at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And this is at uh, Crane's Snowmobile Museum in Lancaster, New Hampshire. And if you're planning to come, do plan to come early because there's so much to see. Uh, before and after the ceremony, you can mill about and go into the museum and check out all of the vintage sleds that Paul Crane owns there at the Crane's, uh, Crane Snowmobile Museum. Um, and you're also able to mix and mingle with inductees, past, present, and future, and just a whole host of vintage snowmobile enthusiasts. It's a really wonderful time. And then, of course, we all sit down for the ceremony itself. And then once the ceremony is finished, uh, we all move over to the after party at the Lancaster Motel, which is just a, a one little block uh, down the road, walking distance from the ceremony and from the museum. And if you're planning to come from any distance to attend, the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame induction ceremony, the Lancaster Motel is the place to stay because it's walking distance from the the the, um, the museum and the ceremony and the after party is right there. So you can have a good time at the after party and as the after party winds down, just uh, meander over to your room and call it a night. Uh, so it's, it's a great place uh, to, to stay if you're planning to attend. Now, since we've got some time on our hands here, unfortunately, uh, Joe, uh, is not able to to get on, which is a real bummer. But we're going to try to have him on next week. We're going to during this coming week. We're going to try to resolve our technical issues so that we can have him on. He's got some cool things to show you, and I've got some other people lined up for next week as well. So I think it's going to be a, a a great show next week. But uh, since we've got a little bit of time to kill, uh, let's to, let's take a look at some um, some of the other interviews with people. Um, that we're milling about at the 2018 ceremony. By the way, these people that you're going to meet uh, were inducted uh, in 2020. So as I was saying before, there were inductees past, present, and future at this ceremony. That's exactly what was going on here. These are people tightly and closely associated with the, the Eastern racing history. Uh, let's take a look here. Let's meet Tom Peters. He was inducted in 2020, but this was two years prior. Uh, I had a chance to catch him for an interview. Let's take a look. My name is Tom Peters uh, from Presque Isle, Maine, now born and brought up in Stockholm, Maine. Uh, raced from the mid-60s, 66 actually, through 76. Uh, raced basically uh, Bombardier, Skidoo, Blizzards, uh, owned five different models of them. And uh, primarily in the 650 class, 
640 and 650 class. Uh, raced a lot of, didn't, didn't race down here with the big guys a lot. Raced, if there was local races, we used to try to hit them because made a lot of travel from Worcester County down. But it did race in Scarborough, Lewiston, uh, Bangor quite a few times. So did cover the whole state. Uh, yeah. Never never did come into New Hampshire to race. It was, yeah. It was just uh, too far back in the day, but sure. uh, we, uh, I was telling some of the guys there today, the guys that were there, I said, you know, we, we got up in the morning, Monday morning, and we looked at our, we looked at the uh, newspaper, or looked at the race results for the weekend, and there was your name. You know, if you were fortunate enough to win, there was your name, but I said, you know, that didn't happen in a bubble. Right. There was all kinds of people behind the scenes that made that happen, but sure. I, I get race results and stuff in here. And you go down through those race results; those people's names aren't there. You well, know, our our names are there, but sure. you know, it was it wasn't a it wasn't a one man deal. You know, it was a, a lot of people of, made that happen. A lot of people to make it happen. It was uh, it was quite a thing. So I really in one of the memorable events, and Cal Reynolds and I talked about it today. We we raced in Bangor, 1970. I pulled into Bangor with a car, with a homemade trailer, with a 1970 Blizzard on the back end of it. Well, and here's all these tractor trailers and factory all these teams. race factory teams out there. And I told the guy that I was with, I, I said, that owned the Skidoo dealership. I said, I can't race here. He said, what are you talking about? I said, look at what they got. I said, here I am with a homemade trailer and a sled on it. And I said, you expect me to go out and compete against that? And he said, look, young man, he said, you put your pants on one leg at a time just like they do. He said, you go out there and he said, you can beat them all. So I went out on Saturday, did not qualify. So uh, Sunday they had a uh, consolation race. And I won that consolation race by, we found some traction equipment overnight. Yeah. and worked till about one o'clock in the morning to get it on there. So I won the first heat, there was three heats, qualifying heats, and I won every one of them by about a quarter of a lap. Really? So everybody was watching then, this guy didn't qualify yesterday, and so I get into the final, Cal Reynolds was in the final. Yeah. And uh, I pushed him quite hard. He beat me by about half a ski lane. Wow. And uh, he was telling me today, he said that they, they threw that chassis away because he couldn't ride on the track. I rode the rail, and he was trying to ride on the bank. He said yeah. they had to throw that chassis away. He said there wasn't a rivet that was left tight in it. He they said, loosened it all up. Loosened it all up. He <laughs> said, I pounded it so hard. He said, and I don't know if you heard him say today, he was up on the bank. He looked down, and there was, <laughs> yeah. there was Tom Peters sitting on the inside rail. So it was, that, that's one of the real good memories, you know, yeah. racing against people like that. So That's awesome. Uh, but it's, it's been, uh, it was a wonderful ride, you know, but, you know, 50 years later, there's a lot of good memories. Yeah, it's nice that it's still remembered today, too. Yep. That yep. means a lot, and yeah. Uh, and they're going to, I talked to Midge there, and they're going to put me in in the 2020 good. category here. So. Good. Sure. Good. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Yeah, Tom Peters. Uh, I love those old stories, the, those old racing stories from yesteryear. Those are so entertaining and so much fun to listen to. I can picture all of that, too, as they're telling those stories. Uh, but uh, this gentleman, Tom Peters, who uh, was just speaking to us, he was inducted in 2020, just this past fall. And I've been in touch with him. I'm planning to bring him on as soon as possible, maybe even as soon as next week. And he's got um, some old snowmobiles he's going to show us. He's got some trophies and uh, scrapbooks and photographs and and memorabilia and and some more stories uh, to tell us and i hope to have him on very soon maybe even as soon as next week we'll see what happens but uh, we've been in touch uh, and just know that that's on the horizon uh to to get to know him a little better and and uh, see him at home with some of his old sleds and his old racing sleds and trophies and things uh, that should be a lot of fun uh before we move on to the next segment i've got one more interview that i got uh from the 2018 eastern snowmobile race of Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I had a chance to catch up with, with uh, Paul Lamontang, who was a big, big name in racing in the 70s. I was able to catch up with him, and he was inducted this past fall as well. But this was two years earlier in 2018. He was there at the ceremony. And if you decide to come to the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame induction ceremony, these are the kind of people that are there, and you can approach them and get to know them and ask them questions and have pictures taken with them. Uh, and it's just so much fun. And you can, and as they're visiting with each other, as they're, as they're visiting with each other, they're telling all these stories about racing back in the day and it's just uh 
if you have any uh, affection or wonderful memories of racing back in the 70s, this is the place to come. These are the kind of people you get to meet and hang out with, and these are the kind of stories you get to hear. Uh, so let's, uh, without further ado, let's uh, spend a minute here with Paul Lamontagne. All right. My name is Paul Lamontagne, and I'm down here uh, for this wonderful event. Uh, and uh, I'm going to tell you right now, these guys have just got the award being inducted into the Hall of Fame really, really deserve it. It's, uh, it's amazing, and it's nice to see them again. And everybody just, you know, all the old memories come back, what you've done, who you were with. You can even pinpoint a time, a certain lap, and we got talking about things. It's fantastic. And uh, I was very fortunate to race from 1969 to 75, and uh, with different teams and different sleds. And uh, we started with Rupp and went on went on to uh, Chaparral's, and after that, finally finished my racing with Mercury out of Horn Lake, Wisconsin, and with Snow Twisters, and, and just had a great time uh, and meeting great people. And, and I'm glad that uh, this vintage racing is, is coming back, because I'll tell you right now, there was people, the young people, just will never have the, uh, the opportunity to do and see what we did. And by doing this, uh, it gives everybody a chance. Even if, if you pick up an old machine and, and get on it and have a good time and good laughs, uh, there's really nothing like it. So I, I appreciate everything uh, you know, that's been done and people that, the way they treated me. And, uh, and the best to everybody. Nice. Any, any favorite memories of, of, of racing back in the day, back in the 70s? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, there, was, there was some, like... Uh, I was racing against Gilles Villeneuve up in Bangor, and he had me by about a half a lap, and it took me 10 laps, and I caught him on the last corner to win a, the modified class, and to, this day, to that day, him and I were friends. We were together. Uh, I also raced against him in Boonville, New York. I also raced against him at Eagle River, where him and I fought for first and second, and he ended up... Uh, I got him in Bangor, and he got me in. It, it was just fun things like this that happen. It's just amazing, amazing, amazing. And of also the guys like Brad Hullins who went on to race for, for uh, Polaris. Uh, him and I, we bumped heads for a whole winter on our Mercury Snow Twisters, and we had so much fun just beating up on each other, really. And and uh, it's things that we'll never we'll never forget. Wonderful. I mean? But uh, I want to I want to thank you for you know interviewing me, and I hope you people get the get the get to get into the to the sport and as I'm 69 years old listen to this I still ride You're still every ride. weekend nice. the last 22 years I'm to be found in Jackman Maine or up in Canada and just having a ball riding right now what I do now I, I got rid of all the fast sleds in, two, in 2012 and now I got myself a nice beautiful touring 1200 skidoo and nice. tour around with my fiance and we're all over the place and we just have a ball we just have a ball so there's no win I mean you can be 85 and still out there running and having a great time and and every weekend when we pull in the Jackman everybody looks forward to seeing each other and, and I'm with friends like Wilkinson out there that I used to race years ago and we just have a ball every weekend so life's too short we gotta enjoy every minute wonderful thank you so much Paul it was nice to meet you thank you very very much yeah Paul uh, Paul Lamontang what a great guy um, I'd like to get him on here as, as well. I, I correspond with him a little bit on Facebook, and I'd like to get him on uh, one of these days on this program. I think that would be a lot of fun. And like I said, these are the kind of people that are hanging out there at the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame induction ceremony. They're just out there walking around. You can walk right up to them and visit with them, get a picture taken with them, ask them questions about racing back in the day. And these are big name racers from back in the day. If you have great memories of that, or if you'd like to share with your grandchildren, hey, this is someone we used to watch back in the day, this uh, induction ceremony is the place to be. You just you come early, plan to come early so you can mix and mingle with these people and you can spend some time inside the Vintage Snowmobile Museum, Crane Snowmobile Museum. And then, of course, at 1 p.m., there's the induction ceremony. This is September 11th this year, Saturday, September 11th. The ceremony starts at 1 p.m. Plan to get there early, though, so you can mix and mingle and go into the museum. It's at Crane Snowmobile Museum in Lancaster, New Hampshire. Then, of course, once the ceremony is finished, just a short walk away, 
the after party is at the Lancaster Motel, which is the best place to stay because uh, you're right there in the thick of it. You can walk to the ceremony, and once the ceremony is finished, that's where the after party is. Everyone is there mixing and mingling and having drinks and telling stories, and you can get your picture taken with these people and visit with them. It's just a wonderful time. And as the after party winds down, you can just go over to your room and, and call it a night. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a great time. I know I push this hard on this podcast, but it really is that much fun. I go every year. I wouldn't miss it. Uh, it's just, uh, it's the best. Now, before we get on to uh, some more of, of what I have in store for you tonight, which uh, we're going to be looking at number five and number six here in a moment, let's go back to the comments and just see what uh, what's coming in here. Ooh, I'm in, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong. Okay, let me, I'm just trying to find my place here. We've had a lot more comments come in. Okay, we've got um, Joel Kuhn, who's a regular viewer. I've seen him on here before. Uh, Elmira, New York. We have Brian Robillard, a good friend of this program. We're going to be having him on again soon, too. We had him on a few weeks ago, and he's got some other projects he'd like to show us. So sometime in the near future, we'll have him on again. How you doing, Brian? Great to have you on. We have Derek Lacey, first-time viewer and rookie vintage oval racer out of Alger, Michigan. Well, great. Glad that you're here, Derek. I'm glad that you're here tonight, and I wish you the best with your on your path with, with the uh, oval racing. I wish you the very best with that, and I hope that you come back and join us every week. Um, if you like vintage racing, you can see the kind of people we have on here from yesteryear uh, talking about uh, the memories of those times. We have Keith Granby, first-time viewer from Motley, Minnesota. Now, I can't help myself, Keith. Is everyone in that town, would that be a Motley crew? <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Uh, but anyway, it's nice to have you on, uh, Keith, and I, I, I hope you come and join us every week. Uh, and I hope you know that I'm just being funny. I'm not trying to be a butthead. But uh, we have Sean Perlson from Rockport, Ontario, Canada. Thanks for coming on tonight. Frank Falcone from Alvin, Texas. Wow, deep in the heart of Texas. Good to have you on. Uh, Sean Perlson, or Pier Pearson, okay. Uh, six, number 601 is his race number. Nice sled. Outstanding. Uh, Josh Kruger is on. Uh, he likes the sled as well. He had a 79. He grew up with a lot of old cats. I think he's talking about Jim Murphy's uh, Panther. And yeah, that's a sweet ride, that is. Uh, John Witte. Oh, here we go. He's talking about a, a race that's uh, coming up February 12th, 13th, and 14th. Vintage racing at Houghton Lake, Michigan. Fast Eddies. So if you guys are interested, do check that out. If you do a Google search for that, I uh, bet you can find it. Jim Akers, Newark Valley, New York. Repeat viewer. Thanks for coming on every week. We appreciate it. And uh, sad that they had to cancel the whiteout. I heard about that. That is really unfortunate. And Judy Rinaldi, yay Bruce. Yes, Judy, Judy Rinaldi has also been inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. Uh, she was inducted this last fall in 2020, and she is the first woman to be inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. A uh, very accomplished racer, and I had a chance to meet her and had an interview with her uh, that day, and she's just a classy, classy lady. And I thank you for coming on, Judy. Uh, we've got Chuck Laco from Preston, Connecticut. Thank you for coming on, Chuck. I appreciate it. Uh, Rick Petruco, even though he had a snow jet as a kid, he loved the cat. He loves the cats now. He had a 72 340 Puma, and he'd like to get that running this year. Now, if you ever get that running, or even if you don't, Rick, we'd like to have you on and, and do some show and tell with that and any other vintage sleds that you have. Uh, if you're curious about that, we'd love to have you on. Uh, send me a private message, and, and we can talk about making that happen. Pat Fuller is Herb Sadonge from Tupper Lake, New York in the Hall of Fame. I am not certain, but I can find out for you. Um, let me look into that, and I'll, I'll try to answer that. I'll try to remember to answer that next week, because I'm in touch with the founder of the Hall of Fame, Midge Rosebrook, and he's got the whole list. And I've only missed one year, which was 2017. Uh, so if he was, it would have been that year, because I wasn't there that year. That's The rest of the names I'm pretty familiar with. Um, but I appreciate you asking that question. That's an excellent question, Pat. And I hope that you might consider joining us for the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony this September in Lancaster, New Hampshire. Perry Chemnitz, Chemnitz uh, good show as always. Thank you, Perry. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate you being a regular viewer. Thank you so much for joining us every week. Uh, Pat Fuller from Malone, New York, born in Tupper Lake. Outstanding. Thank you for coming on, Pat. 
Uh, Pat Lima, great podcast. Thank you, Pat. Uh, Southeast Missouri, he's been sledding for 45 years. Outstanding. So you're an old schooler. Nice to have you on. Doug Reinstra, a regular viewer. I've seen his name here many times watching from Dixon, Illinois. Nick Tattersall from Toronto. Thanks for being on, Nick. Bill Lutz, great old story from Tom Peters. Yeah, that's a great story. And I hope to have him on uh, as possibly as soon as next week for some more of those stories and some show and tell because he's got, got all kinds of trophies and photos and sleds and uh, all sorts of things that he'd like to do some show and tell with us on. So so do come back uh, next week, maybe the week after. I'm not sure when, but sometime very soon we're going to have Tom Peters on here. Uh, John Schoem, quite the competitor and gentleman. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, Mike McLar McCargill, I'm probably butchering that. I apologize that for that, but I appreciate you coming on, Mike. We have Bombard, Floyd, and Lisa. Hey, guys, sorry we haven't been on trying to get our race led together. I appreciate you coming on. I do uh, recognize you. I see that you're, that you're on here a lot. I noticed you haven't been on the last couple of weeks, so thanks for coming back. And also, you guys, if you'd like to come on for some show and tell, send me a private email, and uh, we'll see if we can arrange that. We'd love to get you on, on here live. And Judy Rinaldi is saying hi to Diane Baker. Love you. Cool deal. And Judy is also saying good job to Paul Lamontang. Um, let's see. Oh, and then Diane Baker is saying hello back to Judy. This is cool. <laughs> I love this. Uh, Derek Lacey will do. Uh, Tom Gregory, working on getting him on. Uh, from Armada, Michigan. Yes, okay. Uh, Mike McElgridge. McCargo. I'm sorry. This thing's bouncing around here. Uh, yeah, thank you for coming on. Cecil D. Fossil. I remember seeing you on here last week. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> My throat is getting dry. I'm going to cut to a video here in a minute. But um, Butch Fossil, Kennedy, Minnesota, Massey Collector, Massey Ferguson Collector. He's also got a 1974 I-500 Massey Ski Whiz driver. Cecil, uh, I'd like to talk to you as well about coming on for some show and tell. Uh, please send me a private email if you're curious about that. Love to have you on. Tom Gregory, Armada, Michigan. Uh, Mike is from Caseville, Illinois, I think. I um, hope I'm, I don't have that incorrectly. I'm losing my voice here. So in just a moment, I'm going to, I've got two more to read and I'm going to cut to a video. Take a little drink of water. Uh, Jim McKinney, Do Dolge, Dolgeville, New York. Thanks for coming on. And then Pat Lima. Uh, Pat has a very rare Mercury that he needs some help finding info on. Uh, and if you see his email there, please send him an email. And um, yeah, Pat, we'd like to talk to you about coming on to for some show and tell as well. And then uh, last but not least with the comments, Brett Esseltine. This is somebody I've been emailing with as well. Nice to see you on here, Brett. So yeah, <clears throat> as you can see, my throat is getting very dry. I'm going to play the next video, which is Paul Crane's Blue Goose. I would need to take this comment out. There we go. So, while I take a little drink of water here and take care of my throat, let's take a look at Paul Crane's Blue Goose. <laughs> This is a blue goose that was made by Kettle Aircraft Company in uh, Pennsylvania. They made it mainly for their employees, but uh, it was quite a machine. I, they, they say they made about 45 to 49 of them, and they're real scarce, and, but they really went real good. It was a nice machine, and that's why I uh, have it on my sign, Home of the Blue Goose. Yes. Nice. And this is what, early 60s? This is 60, 62, 63. Yeah. I'm going to get a walker on that. Nice wide skis. I bet they had good flotation, huh? So yeah, that was Paul Crane. And by the way, that is at Crane's Snowmobile Museum in Lancaster, New Hampshire. That's that's where we have that uh, Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It's right outside there at the museum. 
Uh, and I've got one more video to show you. Now, this was taken at, uh, I believe, 2018, maybe 19. I'm not sure. But this this was at the vintage races in Lisbon, New Hampshire. Now, while the races are happening, of course, there's all these announcements happening. And I keep hearing about Team Grondon. Team Grondon, I'm thinking, it's making a little bell go off in my head. Why does that sound familiar to me? seems like I should know something about that. Well, it turns out, um, walking around and eventually meeting the, the, fa the name and the face behind Team Grondon, He's an old friend of mine from high school. That's why Grandin kept ringing a bell in my head. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look. His his uh, daughters were racing in the youth uh, in the youth heats. Let's take a look. <laughs> my name is Francis Grandin. Um, I own the spa restaurant West Tours down in Hampshire. Uh, these are my daughters, Sophie and Sienna. They both race in the uh, vintage. Races for the uh, Lisbon today. Sophie runs an Alouette 340 Super Group. She took a third place today. And my other daughter, Sienna Grandin, she runs a 120 mod. She got it first place today. Nice. Yeah. You want to come a little closer? We can get a look at that trophy. Sure. Nice. Very nice. Congratulations, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. That's cool. How about a picture of the two of you holding your trophies up? Over here. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, nice. Oh, let me get it focused. Know, huh? Yeah. So, what are your thoughts, girls, about today? Any thoughts about the races or vintage snowmobile racing in general? Very good. The track was nice. Yeah. Good. And you guys like vintage snowmobiling? Yeah. You're gonna keep this sport alive? Yep. Yeah. Good. Good. We're counting on you. So this is my green broken ski. Uh, I broke my heat class, but I still came in first. Wow, so even with a broken ski? Yep. Holy, holy cow. Yeah, my dad, he fixed it. Okay. Sweet. So, to make sure I understand, you, you uh, it was another run after the, the ski was replaced that you won? Yes. Okay, so once that broke, you were pretty much done in that oh, race? Done. Yeah. Done. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Now, how did that feel when that came off? Was that pretty hard? I didn't really feel it, but... She was crying. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, did the sled get all no, weird on I you? Or? Knocked the wind right out of her. No. She hit the bale. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it, it, it turned you into the bale? Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, she went, went flying. But you still she came home with the gold. Yeah, I swallowed the snow pretty hard. Holy cow. But yeah. you came home with the gold, right? Yep. Good. That's all that matters. Well, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. And, and those races in Lisbon, New Hampshire. I would like to tell you whether or not they've been canceled or whether or not they're still going to happen, but I am not 100% positive, so I don't dare say, but I am in touch with the organizers. I should check it. I should check on that and uh, report back on the next podcast, but I did want to repeat. I know I've been pushing this show so hard, uh, Crane's Vintage Snowmobile Show. Sadly, that has been canceled uh, for this, uh, for February the 6th. Uh, it's a real bummer. That's one of the more fun. That's one of the funnest shows in the East, as far as I'm concerned. We totally understand because of this whole COVID business. But uh, yeah, sadly, that has been canceled, and uh, we'll just have to wait until next year. But um, as next year comes around, put that on your calendar uh, to attend that show. That show is just an, an awful lot of fun. So I'm going to call it a night. I thank you all so much for being on. It really means a lot. Um, and I look forward to catching up with you all next week, and hopefully we'll have more than one. We'll have, hopefully have two or three even uh, live people on next week for some show and tell. Uh, so please look forward to that. I hope I build up some suspense, uh, giving you some incentive to come back. And like I said, I thank everyone so much for being here. The first time viewers, the repeat viewers, you all mean so much. And uh, if, like I said, I could ask that favor if you could, if you like this, and I'd like to help me promote this and move this forward. If you could share this either on your own profile or on a friend's profile who might enjoy this, or even in a private message to help get the word out and spread the word about this vintage snowmobile uh, podcast, it would really mean a lot. And it would, it is a great way to help for you to help me build this into something uh, really, uh, really nice for, for the snow, vintage snowmobile community. Anyway, with that said, uh, let's take a look now at this video from Mad Raps. It's the ultimate combination of simplicity and ingenuity. The newest way to load, unload, and transport your ATV or UTV. 
The Mad Ramps Pivoting Ramp System. Made in the USA and engineered for strength and durability. Maneuver through tight places and over rugged terrain with plenty of ground clearance. No licensing, no ongoing maintenance costs, and no storage hassles like trailers. Won't slip or move like conventional ramps. Free up more cargo space in the bed of your truck. Securely connects to your truck's receiver hitch. Easily extends for safe loading and unloading. Seamlessly retracts for highway and off-road travel. DOT approved in all 50 states and Canada. Quickly disconnects in under a minute. A unique space-saving storage system. The Mad Ramps Pivoting Ramp System. Go farther. Go faster. Go safer. When you order using the link in the description, I'll send you three free vintage snowmobile DVDs. When you order using the link in the description, I'll send you three free vintage snowmobile DVDs.